Monitor the operation of automatic control systems of propulsion and auxiliary machinery. ICCP ICCP Ships are often exposed to very harsh marine environments. Due to the environment in which they operate, the ship's hull is often vulnerable to environmental corrosion. What is a galvanic cell and why does the ship's hull corrode? When two dissimilar metals are in contact with each other in the presence of a corrosive medium, electrolyte, the more active metal in the galvanic series acts as an anode and undergoes corrosion. This means, in a galvanic series of metals, the more active metal acts as anode and undergoes corrosion and the less active metal acts as a cathode and stays protected. If these two metals are placed in seawater and are in direct electrical contact, a current will pass through the electrolyte from the more active metal, anode, onto the least active metal, cathode. This electrical current is referred to as corrosion current and is nothing but a metal ion and electron transfer process from the anode, which dissolves and passes into the solution. This simple cell where the corrosion process takes place is called a galvanic cell. The series of galvanic chart as follows. Sacrificial anode. Sacrificial anodes are linked electrically to the ship's hull. They are made of metals more reactive than the material used for the ship's body and systems. As such, they shield the ship's body and systems while the ship stays protected, giving rise to the name, sacrificial anodes. Elements such as zinc, aluminum, magnesium or their alloys are used as a sacrificial anode to protect the parent element like iron or steel which forms the cathode. However, these sacrificial anodes do have some disadvantages such as increased maintenance due to replacement every five years, increased hull resistance and no proper means to detect whether the anodes are functioning properly. The need for ICCP We now know from the galvanic cell and the sacrificial anodes, that a potential difference between two electrodes is required for corrosion currents to occur. These corrosion currents dissolve the anode in the electrolyte. But in the absence of a potential difference within the ship's hull, the corrosion current will be at a minimum and corrosion will not take place. This is what the ICCP does. It makes the hull to remain always cathode by keeping the potential difference to a minimum. And an in the ICCP, the metal to be protected is connected to an insoluble anode, and the current is passed using a DC source opposite to the corrosion current, so that the corroding metal gets converted from anode to cathode, and is protected from corrosion. This insoluble anode can be either platinum, platinized titanium or any other inert elements. This DC current has to be equal to a slightly greater than the natural corrosion current so that the anode is now protected and does not corrode. The ICCP operation and its components. DC 24 volt output power supply unit and control panel. The DC power supply may include a rectifier unit converting 440 volts AC supply to DC current. Larger ships usually have two power supply units each in the forward and the aft. The power supply unit is also known as the quantum ICCP panel, and it contains a network of thyristors and PCBs, which monitor voltage and current parameters from the reference cells, and accordingly sends signals to the impressed current anodes. These power supply units have a master-slave configuration, between forward and aft units and performance can be monitored from the ECR monitor panel. The control panel is incorporated with alarms for abnormal readings. Impressed current anodes. The impressed current anodes are usually made up of strong and soluble materials like titanium. They may be disc or stripe shaped. Either two or four units are placed symmetrically forward and aft of the vessel. The anodes are welded on doubler plates onto the hull surface so as to be completely flush to the outside hull plate. This anode material serves only as a source of electrons to the hull and is not consumed in providing this protective current. Zinc reference cell. 
The electrical potential is monitored by reference electrode assembly, which is fitted port and starboard between the anodes, where the lowest possible potential is likely to occur so as to detect the slightest of corrosion currents between the hull and seawater. This reading is fed back to the control panel, which automatically adjusts the impressed current anode output. They are connected through cable lugs and gaskets, and are bolted through a cofferdam body onto the hull surface. These zinc reference cells are highly stable in nature, and give a steady reference in which hull and sea potentials can be measured along with small current flows in the system. These electrodes are completely diver changeable. Remote Monitoring Panel a remote monitoring panel in the engine control room is provided, where ICCP parameters are monitored and logged down daily. It is to be made sure that the ICCP power source is switched off when the vessel is berthing. Or else there is a chance of the ship and shore ICCP system currents to interact with each other, causing hull paint damage. Excess of impressed current into the hull surface can lead to paint peeling off. Rudder bonding cable. To enable the rudder to receive corrosive protection through the ICCP, a flexible rubber bonding cable is used with one end attached to the top of the rudder stock and the other end to the hull structure, using cable lugs or eye plates. This forms a dedicated electrical bond. Propeller shaft grounding assembly with shaft hull MV voltmeter even on ships fitted with the ICCP, propeller shaft bearings are vulnerable to corrosion due to spark erosion. This is because the rotating propeller shaft is electrically insulated from the hull by the lubricating oil film in the bearings and the use of non-metallic bearings in the tail shaft. Due to this insulation created, an electrical potential is developed between the shaft and the hull, which can cause heavy currents to flow in the bearing. Heavy currents can also flow into the main bearings, and thrust bearing and cause pitting marks leading to main engine damage. This problem is eliminated by earthing the propeller shaft to the hull with the help of a slip ring and contact brush assembly.